So I understand no one wants to see me laying in the bed, but there's a reason that I'm doing this. So this room right here is a pretty dark room. I just have a window over here. The sun's going down, the time change, and it's not much light. Now I could bump up my ISO. I could give it some more aperture, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna keep everything where it is. I'm just gonna add light to let you guys see what lighting does. Listen, it's gonna get dark out there some days. Some days you're not gonna feel like you got it inside of you, but I'm telling you, you got it inside of you. You got a battery inside of you, 100 watts worth of power inside of you. You can illuminate that room no matter how dark it is. So I want you to dig deep and I want you to understand that you're here for a purpose. You can light up that room. I don't care if they put diffusion in front of you. I don't care what it is. I don't care if they put soft boxes in front of you. You can shine through. Do not give up. You have to put. Again, I'm using the Jiyun lights here, the CX100 and the CM25. So the 100 is gonna be my main light, the key light, and I just have that bouncing into the wall, off the ceiling and back down. And then to my left here, I have the CM25 going through a shower curtain that's doubled up at maybe, I'm gonna say 30%, and it's gonna be shooting onto my face. So let me let you see what that looks like. All right, so here I am after I added two lights, the ones I told you about. I got this one here, which is a CM25, a fill light, you can see it. And I put the lights in the shot so you can see exactly what's going on. At least I put this one in the shot. The other one's over here, farther in the room. But this one's probably at about 30% power uh, at 5600 Kelvin. Now again, this is a bicolor light, so I can go down to 2700. But it's shooting through this double shower curtain that I have wrapped up here and clamped together. And then over here, I have again the CX100 that's shooting into the wall, hitting the ceiling, and then coming back down on me here. And I think, I think <laughs> that this looks pretty natural. It looks pretty good. Now, I don't have any modifiers like to flag off certain things to stop certain shadows. So that part of it. It, the shot could look better just put it that way but for the sake of just these small lights right here this is something that you can do so if you want to shoot like a short film or something really cinematic on a budget and you don't have a lot of room and you don't have a lot of uh, space to do things in these lights are perfect you see this is not taking out much room here if i had something like an aperture 120d the light would be much bigger and I would have to plug it in. It would take me a lot more to do now. You may be around that on V mount, I don't know. But the same over here. Now I gotta throw a big C stand in here, put a heavy light on it, put sandbags on it so it doesn't fall over. But these are so light, I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. I hope this gives you a gist of what you're able to do. Now I'm gonna punch in with the shot so it looks better and you don't see all this stuff around me. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so you saw the intro, you saw the lights, uh, you may think it looks good, you may not, but what's the point of this video? Why am I making this video? Well, I'm making this video because one, Ji Yoon sent me these lights. They told me I could say whatever I want about it. I could just use them and give my honest review. And that's what I'm doing. The reason I accepted this from Ji Yoon is because I did some research on these lights. They were really tiny and I looked at the reviews for like the Molus X100, which looks a lot like the Cinepeer CX100. So they did a name change on it, but they also changed some of the features, which I'll go over in just a few. But the reason why I chose these lights is because they are really small. And for what they offered, I thought it was pretty good. So I just wanted to show some setups here of what you could achieve with small lights. All right, so here we are in the garage. 
Um, just showing the setup here uh, behind the scenes. This is the Sony FX30. Uh, I'm using the Sony 35 millimeter 1.8 lens and the shooting right into the car here. Uh, right here we have the CX100. Uh, again, shooting right into the shower curtain. Like I said before, let's bring this down so you can see. It's pretty bright. And this again is on its lowest setting. If I turn it up, it gets really bright. So just on its lowest setting there. So move around. This is the shot. I was sitting right here. And then we have the CM25 right here is the light that I was using just to throw some light on that door panel back there just to give me a little something there. And that's really it. This is just a replication of another video I did with the Nikon buying red video. And this is the same setup. This is actually the same day. The only difference is I just threw the CM25 behind me uh, in order just to light up a little bit of the inside of the car, just to give it a little flavor to it. Again, nothing really fancy. It's just controlling the lights is really the key. And being that these lights are small, you can put them in small locations like behind me. So I just wanted to show you guys my setup here. This is the FX30 shooting with the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4. Also use the 56 millimeter 1.4. And right in the dash here, I'll show you. This is the CM25 that I had just shooting through the steering wheel. Now this light looks a little blue on here, but actually it's 5600 Kelvin. It's just that I set the white balance for the lights outside, which is a lot warmer so that warmer so that's why this looks blue but this light just gave me a little bit of lighting on my face here uh, and then behind the truck on the passenger side rear i'm going to show you from the front you can see that's the cm or cx 100 shooting through and that's just giving it a look like there's a car behind you i'm in traffic i'll go behind so you can see this is it right here that's the uh, CX100. Now it's really dirty, this back window here, um, but the light is still making it through. Um, so just so you see the positioning of this here, it's here and that's shining directly on the back. It looks crazy uh, in the camera here with all that dust on it. It's actually um, pollen, but um, the light is barely turned up here. I don't have any diffusion with me. So I'm just using the bare light, just shooting directly in, but I think it comes out pretty good though given that um, it's shooting through this tenant window and all of that. So it, it actually resolves pretty good on the other end, uh, I believe so. So again, that's, that's the setup that I have. And then there's the FX30. And just so you get an idea, that's about how far away from uh, the vehicle the camera is. So I think it came out pretty good. Let me, uh, you guys let me know what you think. So I just wanted to show you what the setup looks like. I've changed it a little bit now. Um, I turned off the light behind the vehicle and I just have the CM25 right here. As you can see, it's turned up pretty bright. So it's gonna, what I didn't want to happen is for the interior to be lit up like this because when you light the interior, it just doesn't, to me, it just doesn't look that good. It doesn't look authentic. It looks like a light is inside here and that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, what I'm looking for is more of a look that the lights outside are actually illuminating me so it looks more authentic. So the key to this that I've learned is to keep the intensity of the light low uh, and then you also don't want it to be direct. Like if I point it like this, it's going to reflect off of things inside the vehicle. But if I point it back at the windshield and turn it up and out of the windshield then it kind of bounces off and it doesn't look as fake um, but then i found if i put it down actually lower here 
where the actual gauges are and let it bounce off the gauge and then just turn it down just a bit to where it's not too bright it looks more authentic it looks like maybe the gauges are lighting my face um, and then I can even flip it around if I want so that it's pointing directly at me and because it's being partially blocked by the steering wheel if I leave it like this then I'm just blown out I'm just lit up very bright but if I turn it down like this to me that looks more natural that looks like it's really real you don't see too much on the inside you see a little bit but it's not enough to make it look like a fake light like if I had it like this because now all of this is being lit up and you got shadows and that just doesn't it doesn't look real to me so I think that's the key to using tiny lights is to not let them overpower wherever they are because even though they're small and they get really bright that can be a problem because it can make things look really harsh because the light source is so small one of the keys to getting cinematic looks is to have a very soft uh, diffused light and, and the more the bigger it is and the more diffused it is the the roll off is going to be better and what that just means is the when you're looking at a person the light side of my face and the dark side of my face isn't going to be a harsh like cut from super bright to super dark it's going to be more like it almost fades like the part of my face is bright and then it fades into blackness just really really subtle and that's what you want when you're dealing with small lights like this i don't even know if you can really see me right now but i just wanted to demonstrate uh what using this these little lights can do for you again i think these are great lights and this has its place and you can use this in a lot of different ways but the key is to control this light and that's the key with all lights if you don't control them they will get out of control especially the brighter you get when you start to step up to like the 120ds the 300 and the 600 watt lights that put out a lot of lumens candelas or lux you know all, we're not going to get into the brightness of the lights but all of that stuff the the higher and the brighter and the more intense the light is the more you have to control it or else it'll just wash out everything so that's why i think working with these tiny lights like this to start out with is actually going to give you a good foundation and a good base to be able to build your credibility in the lighting world if that makes sense so i hope this was helpful to you Looking at the Zhiyun CX100, and if we compare it to the Molus X100, it is a little bit different. This one is made out of plastic. It is a little bit lighter, but this is still a quality light. One of the things you get on the bottom is a USB-C power delivery, and also you get another DC 24 volt input. So this light can be powered even though it has a battery inside of it. Now, if you were to unplug the power while the light was on, because there is an internal battery, it'll go off for a second, but it will turn right back on. Moving to the left side of the light with the two knobs, the top one is for color temperature. You have all the way from 2700 Kelvin all the way up to 6500 Kelvin. And it is a really smooth dial here, so it is really nice and easy to turn. Now, as far as how accurate that is, it seems to be pretty accurate when I match it with other lights, so you're not gonna have a problem with that. Then moving down to the other knob here that turns, this is your brightness knob. Now this knob is a little bit interesting because if you turn it off, it's obviously off. However, once you turn the light on, it's like the light starts around 10, maybe 15% brightness. So it's not gonna give you a really, really dim, dim light. Uh, it's gonna almost just start at a certain point and then go up and ramp up pretty quickly from there from zero to 100. But this can be mitigated and this can be controlled by using things like modifiers to cut down on the light if it gets too bright. Again, these lights overall are very good for what they are. So moving on to the CM25, if we look at the side where the knobs are here, we have two. The top one is going to be our color temperature again, where we start at 2700 Kelvin and it goes all the way up to 6500 Kelvin. And again, just like the CX100, it's pretty accurate from what I match these other lights with. The second one here features the power button. Now this one's a little bit different from the CX100 because first there's a click when you turn it on. Then after the click, 
you start to get your light to come on. Now the CM25 is a little bit different from the CX100 because you get more control over your light. So you can start really dim and it ramps up really slowly, which gives you a lot of control. And this is good because this light is really small. When you have small lights, again, the key is to control the light as much as possible. On the bottom, we have a quarter 20 mount. So we could put this on things like tripods and anything that accepts quarter 20. And this also features a fan that comes on and off. Uh, and they're really quiet, like I mentioned earlier in the video. We also have a light on the back that it tells us if the power is on and where the battery levels are as well. Now with the CX100, we do have a quarter 20 mount on the bottom which allows us to connect this to a light stand or any other thing that accepts a quarter 20 mount. Now I will say something that is interesting about the power button on this unit. You first have to press it once and then you press and hold. And as you do that, you'll see these lights light up and the light will power on. So if you do mess this up, then you just have to wait a second until the lights clear out and then you can turn it on. This can be a little bit of an issue if you're trying to hurry up and turn this light on, but once you get the hang of it, it becomes a little bit easier. But from time to time, I do find myself having to start the sequence over just because of the way it was designed. I would have liked to have this so you just press the button and hold it, and after five seconds or so, it comes on. But either way, it's a power button and it, it's there for a good reason to help you not turn the light on accidentally. So that's an overview on how this light works. With the CX100, the battery is not removable, but with the Molus X100, the battery is removable. So that is something that you wanna take into account. Now, the last thing I wanna say is the accessories that are available with these Zhiyun lights. One of the things that you definitely are gonna wanna invest in is the Bowens mount. Now, this is a proprietary mount, which means that on the light itself and on the back of the Bowens mount, this is a mount that isn't going to be found anywhere else except for the Zhiyun lights. However, on the other end is where you can mount your soft boxes or any other accessory that accepts a Bowens mount. Now, the way this works is you take the Bowens mount adapter and put it on your light stand, and it has the typical screw on the side, I believe it's a quarter 20, and this just mounts directly to your light stand. You then have your adjuster here where you can adjust the angle of the light once it's mounted to the stand. You also have a third button in here or a third knob where you can place an umbrella. So you can actually put an umbrella through that and do a shoot through umbrella. Then you have your regular Bowens mount and a built-in reflector on the inside. And then on the back, you have a disconnect here. And this is the proprietary disconnect that I was telling you about just to connect it and disconnect it from the light itself. And then at the top, you have the Bowens release. So if you have your soft boxes and things like that, you just pull this little button and you can twist out your soft boxes. And that is how this accessory works. The Bowens mount adapter. What you're seeing are the two lights in action. On my left hand side here is the CX100 and on this side here is the CM25, the fill light. I will say that one of the good things about this key light here is the fact that it is very powerful. So it's set probably at 15, maybe 20% on the dial. So my camera settings are, I'm at 800 ISO. I am at 3.2 for my aperture and I am using the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 lens. Now on this side, I have the fill light set to 5600K, both of these are, and this one is at about the same, about 15, 20% here. I mean, it's literally just on. So like you just turn it on and boom, the first light that comes out of it is here. So if I turn this away, you could see that's what it looks like. And then when you turn it back, that's what I look like. So you could tell that there is a benefit to this light and it's not even all the way up. Like it's literally all the way down. So it can get much brighter than this. I want to say it's about maybe two feet away from me. And the light over here is about the same, about two feet. So these are pretty close to me. I have, uh, I have this light, the CX100 going through a soft box, a mini soft box, and then going through a shower curtain that's folded over to give me some soft light here because without this, the light is gonna be pretty harsh. And even with all of this diffusion, I'm losing some stops of light 
I haven't measured it how much I'm losing, but I know I'm losing some light just going through this material here. But again, this is just a testament to how bright these lights actually are. These lights are going to be great for a small room. If you want a, a setup to where you can pack these lights away, these lights are really tiny. And that's the good thing because you can throw them in your bag, pack them down. The biggest part of these lights is going to be your light stand and a soft box. But I'm going to show you some accessories that you can use to even cut down more on the size because they do send you this little dome here that you can use as diffusion. And it does cut down on the harshness of the light, but it's not really ideal if you're really trying to get a really soft look. Now, it does work. The same with the fill light as well. It comes with this little rubber uh, diffuser that goes over it, and it does soften up the light a bit. However, if you really want to get this light to look really smooth and really soft, you're going to have to or you're going to want to throw some diffusion in front of it. Now, as of right now, the fill light doesn't have any diffusion except for the rubber case that's on on the front of it. Now, if I were to take this off or pull it down so you guys could see it, this this is what it would look like. So you see, it's not it's not that much different. It's it's a little bit of it's cutting a little bit off, but it's not it's not that significant. So again, if you want a softer look, you want to put something in front of it to really just spread out the light and diffuse it so it's it falls more evenly on your face. But again, these are not bad lights for what they are, and I highly recommend them. I'm not just saying that because they sent me these lights, but I'm saying it because they actually are. I'm going to be using these lights uh, for a little small shoots and things like that when I don't want to bring my bigger lights and I don't need all that power and to plug them in and that sort of thing. Again, these both can be battery powered as well. They have built in batteries, but you can also power them with uh, any power battery that has USB-C power delivery. So like a V mount battery or something like that, you can definitely power these lights with that. They're not loud either. The fan on this light is cycling up and down. You probably can't hear it's really faint. You may be able to hear my Atomos Ninja uh, powering on now because I'm using the microphone, my shotgun mic right next to it. So you might hear that, but you can't hear this light. It's very silent. And the same with this uh, CX-25 is almost non-existent. Unless you're in a room where it's absolutely quiet, you're not going to, you're not going to hear it. It's, you're not going to hear it. They're quiet. So the fans in these lights are designed very well too. So the links to all of these are going to be in the description below and for 10% off, there is a link below as well. So you guys let me know what you think about these lights. Are these lights something that you will purchase? I highly recommend them. I think they're dope. It's one of the most important things you want to start with in your uh, kit as far as with YouTube. I think it's more important than, than having a really high quality lens. I think it's more important than having the best camera with the highest resolution. Lighting is going to be the key. Lighting can make a crappy camera look okay and lighting can make a good camera look awesome. That's my take on lighting, but until next time, I'll holla at y'all later, I'm out, peace.